Hi, I'm Van. How you doing? Wow. That last show we did with the metal blank worked out great. Did all kinds of funny stuff. And uh, we're ready to go on to the next thing. It's something I've been wanting to do for, oh, going on a year now. Turns out that the stitch I originally learned to do peyote is actually pretty uncommon among the Native American tribes. They tend to do what's called a three-row gourd stitch, not a two-row gourd stitch. And the difference between them is that with the stitch that I do, you do two rounds, two rows, and that adds a bead to each column. With the three-row gourd stitch, you got to add three rows to get a bead in each column. And it works out a very different pattern. Uh, it might not be so obvious to most people, but when you look at it closely, and we'll do that, uh, you'll see the difference almost immediately. I don't know. I got all kinds of visions inside my head and everything. Who knows how this one's going to turn out. And I've never completed a three-row piece. I tried it a little bit and messed it up pretty bad. Because that's when I realized you need to have a form. You need to have something for it to go on when you're building up the three rows or it don't work out so good. So uh, we'll give her a shot and see how it goes. The plan. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to do stuff and it's all going to blow up in my face. That's how plans work on this stuff. Let's just get in there and start thrashing around some. What do you say? Let's get to it. Okay, so we are going to be beating onto this lighter, this metal blank, which is 48 beads around. But the interesting thing is uh, with this three row, you don't start with 48 beads, you start with two thirds of it. So one of the constraints of doing three row is it has to be divisible by three. Doesn't have to be an even number, apparently, but it has to be divisible by three. So, luckily, 48 has a three in it. <sighs> three times 16. So we'll give it a shot. So just like two row peyote, the gourd stitch, you go through two beads on each row. As you add each row, you go through two beads. And that's how it's working. And this is actually, because it's 36, that's two rows, you only add one-third each row and so the next row is going to be 16 beads so we'll count those out and we'll thread them on and uh, it's still skip a bead go through a bead but it's a little bit different in that uh, uh, instead of being positioned right on top of the next bead it's actually going to be to the right of the two beads so you skip one go through one no wait a second you go through one skip one and then that's where the bead goes uh, I'll get a few rows put on here and then we'll see how it looks. So, what I found really interesting is I really kind of started my first row here and I ended up threading right through and he was right. Uh, for the most part, it's very intuitive how these things go together. You can start seeing this little three line right here starting to emerge right on the first row. Now, I gotta figure out what I did wrong here, but uh, so sure as shit, when I started doing just all brown like that, I got lost. Uh, which bead am I supposed to go through again? I don't know. So instead of having, we're doing 48, so instead of having uh, 48 starter beads, I'm gonna go with that 36, which is what you start with, and then really I'll start in on my first actual row with the browns over here and start trying to build up. The other thing is, uh, just like I experienced with the other one, working on this form at the start is a big freaking waste of time. So I'm going to get my first row and get it all situated and everything, and uh, maybe even a second or third row, and then we'll see where we go from there. So I mean, look at this right here. You see that? This is my freaking train wreck that's at the start of everything with three row, gourd stitch. The train wreck is, that's the way that it works. Holy shit! Oh man! Go figure! Look at that! That, that, you know, when you organize the train wreck, that's the freaking, that's the freaking stitch! Mmm! Oh, I gotta add some more rows. 
I mean, look at this. Watch this. Add the speed. You go through the bead that you put down from the last row and look where it falls in. I mean just naturally right in the spot that it's supposed to go. Look at that. Can you believe it? Look at the next one. Let's do another one. I mean, oh my god. This is the way it was supposed to be done. Look at that. Well, it almost did it. It's supposed to go right there. You see that? Boom. Now you do get this really long line in here, and that was one thing I noticed about this three row gourd stitch is you're going to use a lot more line per bead, right? But, damn. I mean, look at that. Uh oh. See, this is where I get hooked up. It's looped around, so I got to unloop. Did I, did I do something wrong? I did something wrong here. What did I do wrong? Let's go back. I think I skipped over a freaking bead or something. No, it's supposed to go... It's supposed to go right there. Yeah. It's just not as intuitive as I expected. Except this part about where the bead falls right where it's supposed to. Why? Why? What the hell is wrong here? Ah, shit. See? I'm sitting here getting all excited and everything's going wow and then what do you do? You freaking go through too many beads. Blip. <laughs> Alright, so let's, let's go back through here. And he ends up there. Good. And this guy's misaligned. So these guys all got misaligned way back there. I flip from one side of the road to the other side and that's what's screwing them up. So I didn't actually mess up, it's when I tightened up is where I messed up. The beads got misplaced. See that guy is not supposed to be there. He's supposed to be like that. See that difference? Subtle, yet important. Just like most of life's lessons that really matter. So I'm kind of drifting along with this and it's not really obvious with the pattern because I'm doing this fade but if you look in here there's this real long line of brown up to this vertical brown point and then just a few to get back. You know real long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And then this other one if you count both ends one, two, three, four. Four and seven. Wow. <laughs> but it is a, a six pattern. You know, there's six of these things. So that implies that there's eight beads involved in the whole thing. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just so different. I can't even hardly feel like using the math to do this. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and just continue on with this for a bit and see how it goes and then maybe close it off. You know, and that'll get me, you know, midway. And then we'll see what we do on the other part. But uh, so far I haven't felt like using any black except for the bottom. Well, my first attempt was going along pretty good until I dropped the lighter on the ground and a bunch of beads broke. And I pitched a shit fit and cut it all up. And you know what? It's easy to cut up too. <laughs> so I'm going to try again. Got my feet wet the first time. And uh, got a little more sense of the pattern and everything. And I really want to see this spiral come out. I really, really want to see that happen. So I'm going to try something different that really focuses on the spiral itself. And see where that takes me. Okay, so that's what we've been doing, working up towards so far. I undid some of my starting work and, and redid it back so that I could carry the pattern I developed to where it stopped and uh, finished off with a little bit of beige right there. And that'll be the bottom of the lighter. 
So, you know how I like things symmetrical. And I did this on one other lighter at one time, but I'm going to start up another piece here and work in, and I'm just going to join them together so that it's the same middle part, and we'll see how it looks. So I've uh, worked up till I've almost finished this string, but I got to a point where I was ready to go back and redo the start, so I undid a bunch of beads and finished it up. You, you can see the the basic motif is this little uh, grouping of nine here and I went ahead and went through my fade all the way to the end and then I started up with this central piece here. Um, I had not originally done that. I was like, well that's what I really was trying to do. So I went ahead and went back and did that and then uh, I want to add ahead and added some more beige in here as a fill. So we got our starter beads laid down in the first row of the very bottom of black. And we're going to just duplicate up what we did here. Uh, the, only, the only thing I found that's a little difficult is I'm having to beat on this side now and deal with this. Uh, whereas before when I was doing the beading I could always slide it all the way to the end whichever side I was on and deal near the weave near the end here I don't have a choice the form such that I need to kind of have it doing it this way um, that's the whole point behind this is to uh, make something perfectly symmetrical with this on the other side Okay, so I finished on all the colors and stuff. I can put all this stuff away. All that's left now is down to the uh, black and the beige. And I took the starter beads off the bottom and sewed that off and backstitched it up and it's all good to go. So all we got to do now is just fill in in the middle. And you can see we could kind of stop at almost any time. <laughs> almost. I uh, got to add a little bit more. But uh, I'm really going to shoot not to uh, put too many beads on. Uh, the problem with this one was that uh, the pattern I ended with, this little bit up top, to do it right and end with that purple bead, it put me over. And it bunched up on the ends and I didn't like how that turned out. So in this one, we've got it set up so that the pattern ends in the middle because it's the same thing over and over. It's just going to fit together kind of like, well, I don't know like that. See, that would be one way to go. And you could do another where it bars off like this, you know. I don't think I like that one as much. I like this, yeah, you see how these bars are doing? You could do it like that. But then there's this other one where it kind of, look at that, it's just this big zigzag all the way. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, I'm going to do that. That's way cooler. Look at that. Yeah. Which do you want? You want a lighter like that? Or you want a lighter that's boring? Like that. It's just boring. Look at it. Oh, I'm just like every other lighter out there. Whatever. No, no, no. Yeah, we're going to freaking do this right. I'm going to have to undo some stuff. It looks like I started to make some... So I made some kind of mistake there. I'm going to have to figure that out. But, uh... That concept is pretty freaking cool. You know, not like that, but like that. That, that is snazzorific right there. Mm. Look at that. You know, it's got a little, little thing. But uh, I went ahead and added a few more rows there. And save for a few little rough spots in the join or in the weave or whatever. I'll have to review it pretty closely. That's how you do three stitch. That's how you do three row. Commonly called the gourd stitch. I guess, uh, you know, you can see I ended well short of the edges. I actually ran out of string and didn't want to string on another thread to add one more row of beads. I think it could have taken one more. I was like, you know, why, why do that? Yeah, so one of my big choices of creativity of whether to add a row or not was due to laziness. I chose not to do it. 
So now we're done with the beading. Time to add the coats and see what this turns into. Okay, so it's been just a few minutes since I laid down that coat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and see if I got too much on. Hey, not bad. So uh, if I've got too much on, uh, this would be bulging out and there might even be some drips below. You know, at this point, and then I'd start pulling, pulling uh, stuff off. You know, and pulling uh, the excess off. Or trying to spread it around again a little bit to what it already dried. That kind of thing. So, uh, at this point, I'm just going to leave it alone for a while and let that coat dry. And then I'll come back and rinse and repeat. Thankfully enough, it's not only Saturday when I've got free time, but it's freaking sunny. No clouds. So, that heats this whole thing up and it makes the process go a hell of a lot faster. That's my theory. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. All right, there you go. Have a look at that thing. What do you think? Oh, I love it. I love it. Here's what I like about it is this. That line in there. Yeah. That, that, boy, that sets it apart. It really does. Because that shows you how, that, that's work. You could have done that all solid, which you did before. Well, on you know, occasion, you, yeah. I'd make these little diamonds or whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. But this is, that's really neat. <laughs> What do you think about the finish on it? It seems a little dark. A little dark. It well, it's supposed little... to be a clear finish, but you definitely see, if you put too much on, you start to see this kind of this mirror reflection. And the highlights of the finish actually come out more than the beadwork. So I think I'm starting to get some, okay. some bad vibes about these thick coats. Yeah. In that one, you really lose the structure of the bead. And uh, two, it starts looking like like it's a freaking paperweight. Yeah, and that's. Look at a mosquito on the end of your finger. Oh, oh. You can get him. I'm I am really sorry. This is going to keep me away from moksha just a little bit longer. Let's balance it out. What do you say? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, I think the only thing left to do is to try and give this piece to the person I made it for that I kind of had in mind from the beginning of who would get it and see what they think of it. My picture. Well, so there it is. The gourd stitch. And uh, this is the proud new owner. This is Memo. Who's this? Manny. Manny. Who's this? Xavier. Xavier. And who's this? Oh, Sophie. Uh, Sophie. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the last video at the end, we talked about, uh, you know, why I didn't, you know, charge for my lighters or anything like that. I mean, look at this. <laughs> look at this gift that they give me in my life. Hey, can I be in the picture? I can't. All I can give them back and say is, you know what? I love you guys and memo with you. You know, would you take this lighter? Thanks, man. Love you, man. Love you too, bud. Take care. <laughs>